Today we're here with Dinesh Chavan. He's the avionics systems leader for the Astra rocket. So a little bit about Astra. We're here trying to develop a rocket that will go to the carbon line. And that's the official boundary between uh, the atmosphere and space. And one of the important systems that's involved in getting to the carbon line is the avionics system. Some of you may not know what, what the avionics system is or what it's doing. So uh, that's why we brought Inesh here to help us introduce us to the system and tell us about what it's all about. So Inesh, what is avionics? Avionics is just a bunch of electronics which you put on the rocket to measure the flight data using sensors and then also send that data to the ground station through telemetry. Tell us a little bit more about what this data that you're collecting on board the, the spacecraft is. So flight data is anything you want to know about your rocket. So it could be acceleration, altitude, attitude, which is the orientation of the rocket as it, as it uh, flies. And yeah, uh, also the location using GPS, because you also want to recover the, uh, recover the rocket after the flight. Okay, so basically the data that you're collecting on the on board is going to help tell us how high the vehicle goes. Yes. And it's also going to tell us where the vehicle is at the end of the flight. Yeah. Uh, well, why is that important? Isn't it pretty easy to get it? Doesn't it just go up and come back down? Like, shouldn't it be like pretty much where you launched it? So the flight trajectories are affected by many parameters like the wind speed and the angle of uh, launch. Uh, which you could calculate before the launch, but the real world doesn't always work like your theoretical calculations. So recovering a rocket after the flight becomes quite difficult. And also uh, you have to find out where it is and uh, the altitude also plays a very important role in soft landing of the rocket. Okay. Okay, so it seems like the real world is a little more complex and can cause a really yeah. big uh, error in where we expect the rocket to be. Yes. Okay, so we kind of understand what role the avionics uh, system is playing. What exactly, how does this system look like when you integrate it into the rocket? Like where is it going in the rocket and uh, what are some special design techniques that you use to integrate it? So the avionics system usually goes uh, in the part of the rocket where you put your recovery. So the, because you want to recover the data, you also want to recover the avionics system. So the avionics system should always be attached to the part where you put the recovery module. So if you put your recovery module and the avionics system in the nose cone, uh, then you're recovering the whole nose cone. And you could also put the avionics system in the in the fuselage of the rocket, but then you have to uh, have to recover the whole fuselage. Tell us a little, a little bit more about the components that are going to be inside of the avionics bay. Like what will be measuring our altitude? What will be measuring our acceleration? Mm -hmm. And how do these devices work that are doing this? So for measuring altitude, there are different types of methods which we are implementing. So the altitude could be calculated using barometric altimeters or IMUs and also GPS altimeters. So barometric altimeters measure the pressure of the atmosphere and the pressure of the atmosphere has a relation uh, with the altitude. So as the altitude increases, the pressure decreases. So from this relation, we know the altitude of the of the rocket. And the second method is the IMU. So IMU consists of sensors like gyroscope, accelerometers, and from this data and the time of apogee, you could calculate the apogee height. And the third method is the GPS altimeters, which give you GPS data in three axes. And from this three axis, you could calculate the, uh, the 3D location of the rocket. Are these sensors things that you can just buy as a normal person or are they really costly or do they need special permits in order to utilize? All the sensors are pretty cheap and are available to buy, but there are some regulations on GPS modules. GPS modules are not allowed to give output above some velocity or altitude limits. Is that like a military thing or? Yes, because basically if you have a GPS module which gives you that data, anyone can build a missile. Ah, okay. <laughs> We would want that. Yeah. <laughs> what are some key design challenges that the avionics system faces that you guys had to design around in this particular case? Okay, so uh, we are also using a telemetry module to get the data live during the uh, flight. So for a telemetry link, you need an antenna and which transmit the radio signals. So we have to put all the avionics system inside a rocket and rockets have a metal or fiberglass structure and we have to put the avionics system inside the rocket. 
So accommodating all the components and also uh, getting the telemetry link at the ground station through the uh, rocket structure kind of uh, becomes difficult. So is the antenna inside of the nose cone of the vehicle or is it like outside of the nose cone? Because if there's like a material between the antenna and the outside world, does that cause problems with communication? Yes, uh, if you are putting an uh, antenna inside the rocket, then the material of the structure should be uh, RF transparent. So you can't use metals or carbon fibers as a structure if your antenna is inside the rocket. One thing I was also wondering is, you know, using just like a walkie-talkie, like if you move more than like five kilometers away mm -hmm. from your partner with the walkie-talkie, uh, you'll probably be out of range and not be able to hear them anymore. So how is the avionic system able to talk to their rocket when it's like 100, 150 kilometers away? Uh, this all comes down to the types of antenna you use and the transmitting power. Also, uh, if you go more into detail, it also it is also affected by the modulation schemes and the data rate that you transfer. Okay, so basically we've just selected an antenna that's big enough yeah. to be able to handle the distance between the yes. between the ground site and the, the launch vehicle itself. Yeah. One thing that's uh, a difficulty with rocket launches is the accelerations. Mm -hmm. So for the Astra launch vehicle, we're expecting accelerations up to 15 Gs. Uh, how is Avionics Bay going to be able to withstand those accelerations? For this, we mount all our components on our Avionics Bay, which is designed specifically to handle all the uh, gravitational force uh, forces that the rocket will experience. Okay, so th there's a plan to test the Avionics Bay uh, up to the expected 15 Gs of acceleration. Yes, Okay. with all the components mounted on. One last thing that might be of interest is when you design electronics to a space, usually you have to use special types of techniques to harden the electronics, mm -hmm. to protect it from things like the radiation that comes from the sun and also from other radiation sources that are, uh, in, the, in the solar system and in the universe. Uh, are we doing that with this avionics bay package or is this just mostly off the shelf type of components that would also just be working on Earth? Hardening all the electronics components uh, to withstand all the cosmological radiation effects uh, is quite costly and because we are on a budget, uh, we are using just uh, off-the-shelf uh, available components. And also we are not spending a lot of time at the Apogee, so we are not concerned about the cosmological radiation effects. Okay, so it's it's so short that it's not even really worth yes. considering. Okay. One thing that's interesting that uh, we've heard some rumors about is potentially having a payload aboard the Avionics Bay. Um, there's maybe a plan to take some plaques with some names on them into into space. Is oh. this uh, is this real, a real thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have designed our avionics space uh, such that there's space for these plaques and all our sponsors and our supporters get a chance to put their name on that plaques, which go to space. All right, you heard it here. Uh, definitely going to be space on board for some interesting memorabilia for our key sponsors. Thanks a lot, Anesh, for stopping by and telling us a bit about your system. Uh, definitely really excited to see the avionics bay fly on board the, uh, the rocket, so. Thanks, uh, it's been a pleasure working with Astra. We're really looking forward to hearing that 100 kilometer call out <laughs> at the launch site. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>